in terms of a few brief words of introduction, I know some of you know me, but many do not. Um, I've recently taken over the role of forecasting future car values at Cap HPI from Dylan Setterfield, who probably you do know uh, better than myself. Uh, Dylan's now doing international forecasting. Uh, but prior to joining CAP three years ago, I was heading up the pricing teams and doing residual value, residual value forecasting for uh, Lloyd's TSB Auto Lease and Lex Auto Lease, after, uh, with uh, more years than I care to remember in the contract hire and leasing company uh, business. So I've been asked to come here and talk about the big picture from a CAP perspective. So I thought, what could I start with? There's a pretty big picture. One that we remember from years ago, and you might remember it for different reasons. Um, one of the reasons is that uh, there was an offer that you couldn't refuse. And that's been very much the case in the world of consumer retail sales in the last few years. The offer that people can't refuse is that has been that PCP offer uh, of a new car at $2.99 deposit and then $2.99 a month or $1.99 a month. Or even incredible offers of, of under £100 a month. So as Graham said in his introduction, PCP has, has really taken off. Uh, and the reason for that, I believe, is that, is that there's no obligation to, to buy the car at the end of, of a PCP, PCP deal. So typically, drivers do return the car and take out another deal uh, of uh, probably a, a better model with better features at probably no higher a monthly payment. So we have seen that move uh, in terms of retail sales to, uh, to PCP and people uh, paying for the usage of a car rather than purchasing it outright. Um, and in Cap HPI, we see that as being very much in parallel with the way that people now never buy mobile phones. Uh, they, they rent a phone and then upgrade it at the end of their contract. So we're calling that the iPhoneification of car acquisition. We see it going down very much the same route. And with, and with PCH, personal leasing, uh, I see no reason why the same advantages can't apply to the same customers. Uh, the focus so far has been on PCP, but PCH has all the same advantages in terms of being able to constantly have a new car for a fixed monthly payment. So I'm going to look at the, uh, the, the way that PCP uh, returns and the way that market dynamics at the moment um, have uh, have meant for car values uh, and see what we can learn from that in the context of personal leasing. So we know that new car registrations have been rising steadily since the uh, recession uh, and our own forecast at Cap HPI is that we think 2016 is going to end up probably slightly higher than 2015 but it all does very much depend on the last couple of months of the year or now just one month remaining uh, and the number of pre-registrations in particular that might happen but we think it's, it's going to be probably on a, on a par with 2015. And that increase has uh, been driven both by the retail sector and the fleet sector. So I'm going to look at the, the, uh, the retail sector first, which is where the PCP growth has happened. And you can see on the red line there the, uh, the actual volume of, uh, of retail registrations has, has grown steadily since 2010. And it's been matched and, in fact, probably exceeded by uh, the percentage of retail sales that have, that have uh, uh, been done via some funded product, which, are, which is the green bars. And the bulk of that funded product growth uh, has come from uh, PCH, which really took off in 2012-2013. And now over 80% of total retail sales are, are through a funded product. And the PCP uh, returns, uh, or the PCP uh, deals, uh, have typically led to cars being returned to dealerships because they want to trade into a, uh, to a better model. So starting off in 2012, uh, that means that we've already seen quite a number of returns uh, back into the market, and some drivers are now on their second and probably considering their third PCP deal. And currently, this is information from the FLA, uh, there's about 76% of all new car purchases from dealerships uh, are done through PCP. Uh, as Graham said, uh, PCH is about 7%, but growing, growing slowly at the moment. But the question is, how, how much quicker will that take off? So PCP is very popular with the consumer, and it's also very popular with dealerships uh, because, because of the positive equity that typically uh, is in the vehicle, probably before the end of the PCP deal. 
drivers are keen to return to the dealership uh, and take a new, a new model on PCP. So that gives the dealerships uh, a constant supply of ready, relatively low age and low mileage vehicles that they don't need to go out and source at auction. And we know through our uh, discussions with finance houses and with uh, retail dealerships that the typical age of vehicle return is 26 to 28 months. So those on three-year deals are coming back early and those on 24-month deals are coming back early as well. But typically the age of return is about just over two years. And that has been the case for several years now. So what does that dynamic of a lot of uh, relatively new uh, low mileage vehicles coming back onto the market, what's, what's that done for uh, used car values, particularly around that age? Well, this looks at the, the CAP HPI trade sales database, which is primarily made up of trade sales that we get from the major auction houses, but other sources as well. And you can see that this year, uh, year to date, the majority of vehicles sold are your typical uh, X um, fleet uh, vehicles up between sort of three to three and a half years old, about 35% of them. Uh, under one year, yeah, the short-term business is quite a large percentage, about 23%. Uh, and the, the, the two to, the two, to, to, uh, to two and a half uh, age vehicles, under 14%. So, so in trade sales, there's a relative shortage of, of that age of vehicle. And that's been very much the trend over the last, uh, over the last eight years or so. There's really been no change in the, in the split of that, uh, of that trade sales volume by age of vehicle. Uh, the, the, the two and a half to three and a half uh, age predominate uh, and always have done. Uh, and there's been a slight rise in the, in the newer vehicles and a slight rise in the, uh, in the uh, one and a half to two and a half year old, which is, which is the orange line on this chart. And that's probably... Uh, that increase has probably come more through the, the gradual increase in, uh, in PCH rather than PCP, because as I say, most PCP returns don't go through trade sales, they go straight back to dealerships. This chart looks at the, uh, the uh, history of how use values have deflated and changed over the course of time. And I'm using this to demonstrate that those, those uh, used car returns straight back to the dealerships haven't really impacted 24-month-old values. So let me just explain uh, the data that's behind this chart. Um, at CAP HPI, we've, we've always monitored what we call the year-on-year -year deflation of values. And we do that by taking uh, the trend in time of the, uh, of the value of the same vehicle, the same CAP ID, at the same age and mileage, and, and, and tracking its difference, which is what you see here. So when a, mo when a model changes and a new generation is introduced, we strip that out of the data so that what you're looking at is a true reflection of market movement uh, without any uh, false inflation caused by changes in models uh, or, any, or any skewing of information caused by looking at a different mix of models, as, it, as can sometimes be the case with some of the data that we see. This is purely like for like over the course of time. And the lines represent the, the deflation of different ages of vehicle in our, in our trade data. And you can see that uh, there are probably three, three takeouts, I think, from this. One is that if you look at, uh, at um, two, three, and four-year-old vehicles, they're all pretty much tracking the same direction, uh, whereas, whereas one-year vehicles, which is the, the green line, have suffered uh, much more severe deflation than, uh, than older vehicles. Uh, the, other, the other takeout is that there's been an anomaly over the last few months, uh, which, which is represented by September and October, where there's been a relative uh, short-term lack of stock going through auctions. So that's caused not as much deflation as we, as we would normally expect and have seen in the past. But we think that's going to change uh, over the last few months of the year. And I think when we, when we see the results of, uh, of November data and December data, things will be back on normal because the volumes now seem to be going through auction. So my take out from that is, is that, is that two-year-old values haven't been impacted uh, by the fact that a lot of two-year-old vehicles are going straight back into the dealerships. They're still, they're still uh, commanding the same premium and deflating at the same rate when it comes to auctions. One-year-old vehicles, though, uh, have been faring much worse, and the reason for that is, uh, is pre-registration activity. So we've got a database of about 700,000 retail adverts uh, which is updated daily, 
And we use that for many purposes, but one, one of them is to track the number of late plate vehicles that are already advertised for sale uh, in the retail world. So this was a snapshot taken a couple of weeks ago. And you can see that, that even then, there were some nearly 25,000 uh, 2016 66 plate vehicles, uh, genuine vehicles, all with the registration number, advertised for sale in the UK. Uh, and you can see that uh, the, uh, the, which manufacturers contribute the majority of those. Uh, and some of the names that you see there probably won't be a surprise to you at all. It is that, uh, that pre-registration activity with lots of nearly new vehicles for sale that is dragging down the values of one-year-old vehicles. So in summary, what does all this mean for, uh, for personal leasing? Well, my view is that from a residual value point of view, it's no different to traditional business-to-business -business leasing. Um, typically, I would expect that your, the deals being written will be on two or three years. Uh, and they'll be absorbed into trade sales uh, without any difficulty because the numbers are relatively low, even if they increase. And if you were worried about doing two-year deals, my view is that, that there's no real cause for concern. Um, the the, the behaviour of values for, for two- and three-year-old vehicles have been the same. One year is, is probably more of a risk because of that pre-registration activity. So I think the, P, the PCH returns when they do come will be attractive to trade buyers, because like PCP, that they'll, be, they'll fill that gap in the market where there are relatively few vehicles, and they'll be at a lower mileage than the typical B2B leasing vehicles. And I think to, to, um, to manage RV risk, it's pretty much what you would do for, uh, for B2B leasing. Make sure that you've got a good mix of vehicles coming back. Uh, look out for brands and models that are prone to uh, pre-registrations and to short-term rental activity. Uh, and of course, consider whether or not you want to do um, non-maintained vehicles. So you've probably all, all got your policies on that when it comes to uh, business to business leasing. So apply the same thing to, uh, to personal leasing as well. So finally, I would say that certainly from a residual value perspective, personal leasing is unlikely to bring any nasty surprises. Unlike some of the offers that have been in the past that people can't refuse. Thank you.